What is up, weather enthusiasts? I'm your host, Pat's Path Predictor. Let's get right into the weather. All right, so here's the situation we have for you, ladies and gentlemen. We have this area of interest that is anticipated to become an invest in the next few hours. In the current center of circulation has been kind of wobbly over the last 12 hours. A few hours ago, it was over here uh, near Nicaragua. Now it's over here near Panama. So we have a lot of stuff to really cover today for you guys to kind of get a true understanding of what's maybe going on and who could see uh, potentially a, a lot of impacts from this. Here's the situation. Let's go ahead and jump right into it. Here's the situation. A large area of disorganized showers and thunderstorms over the southwestern Caribbean Sea is associated with a broad uh, trough of low pressure. Environmental conditions appear conducive for uh, development of the system, and a, quote, tropical depression is likely to form during the latter part of this week while it moves northeastward across the western and central portions of the Caribbean Sea. Interesting. Jamaica, Cuba, Haiti, the Dominican Republic, the southeastern Bahamas, and the Turks and Caicos should monitor the progress of the system. Regardless of development, the system has the potential to produce heavy rainfalls over portions uh, of the Caribbean coast of Central America and the Greater Antilles through the end of the week. Formation chance in the next 48 hours is now at 20%. It was at zero when we reported on it yesterday here on the Pat's Path Predictor channel. Now it is at 20%. And the formation chance in the next seven days remains at 70% at this current point in time. However, like the NHC is forecasting, Jamaica should be paying attention to this. All of Hispaniola should be paying attention to this. Cuba should be paying attention to this. The Bahamas should be paying attention to this. And all the, and even Central America, even though you're not going to see a lot of the brunt of the winds, you're still getting a lot of more rainfall from this than you were previously. So this is a lot of stuff we need to continue to pay attention to right there. And my particular concern right now, especially for the greater Antilles is a lot of those islands are very mountainous, particularly eastern Cuba and Haiti in particular, because what I've noticed uh, is, is that over the mountainous areas, wherever tropical systems go, yeah, it kills them off quickly. But what it does is it dumps a lot of rainfall and causes tons and tons of mudslides, tons and tons of landslides, and results in a lot of people getting killed, particularly in Haiti, because it has really nothing going for it, other than the fact that it has, it has a, really a terrible uh, geography when it comes to hurricanes, at least impacts, rather. It has a terrible economy, and it has a, no government to speak of. So that's my main situation with it right there. And my main concern for right now is Haiti. Jamaica definitely could see some impacts, don't get me wrong, but they have a lot more development than Haiti, and they should at this current point in time. The, the earthquake and all that that's been going on in Jamaica, that does cause some concern at this current point in time. However, it's not as bad as, of a situation as it is in Haiti because you have just people living in slums. You have people living off mountains that have very uh, little uh, grass and very little soil to really kind of keep the water, uh, keep the water at bay. Because yeah, it's just. And whenever a tropical system approaches Hispaniola, it usually does not end well, especially for Haiti. So that's my main concern going into next week. And now we're going to go ahead and start showing you some model runs to kind of give you a better understanding of what we may be looking at. We're going to start with the European. We'll give you the operational, and then we'll give you the ensembles as well as the shear and the moisture forecast. That's what we're going to do today. Here's the European model. It's showing signs of really some, some organization and some development in about two to three days before approaching Jamaica as a tropical depression or tropical storm, but producing very heavy rainfall, especially for the mountainous areas in Jamaica before making landfall in Cuba. And, well, not exactly making la landfall, but bringing impacts to Cuba, Haiti, the Dominican Republic, the Bahamas, and those areas right there. And now the operational European model isn't really fo uh, picking up on a centered low-pressure system at this current point in time. However, if we go ahead and show you the ensembles, it's a bit of a different story, and I'll go ahead and sh uh, show you what I'm talking about. Here's the European sea level, uh, main sea level pressure ensembles right there. What we're looking at is quite a few hurricane and tropical storm scenarios, especially as it moves through Jamaica, and then the, the models kind of split from there, either impacting Cuba, Haiti, the Dominican Republic, 
Republic or pretty much a combination of the three before approaching the Bahamas and Turks and Caicos before dissipating in the Atlantic Ocean over there. The ensembles have been pretty interesting to say at the very least. A lot of the ensembles are still forecasting either tropical storm or weak hurricane strength at this current point in time according to the European ensemble. This is all stuff we need to pay attention to as time continues to go on. If we go ahead and go back to the operational and show you the wind shear forecast as well as the moisture component to give you a better understanding of what we may be looking at right here. This is what we got. The shear forecast at this current point in time, forecasting the shear to weaken, and especially in the southwestern part of the Caribbean Sea, as this thing starts to organize, this thing starts to develop, and this thing starts to strengthen as it approaches Jamaica. And then we start seeing a gradual decrease of wind shear across the western half of the Caribbean Sea. Although we do see a bit of uh, an increase of wind shear in the western uh, part of it right here, it does kind of uh, stay uh, far enough away to not really hamper tropical development at this current point in time. In fact, it might actually help tropical development. I know it's a paradox. You're probably asking me, Patrick, how, how does shear help tropical development? Well, in certain cir uh, uh, cir circumstances, you do see a situation where the shear is far enough away from the system that it catches the outflow of it, which outflow is basically what helps the circulation and basically what he uh, helps this thing further organize and develop. And if it helps catches a lot of that outflow and helps enhances that, well, it definitely will help give it a lot more rotation and it definitely will give it a lot more of a chance of strengthening. We've all seen this with Hurricane, uh, Hurricane Ian. We saw this with Hurricane Otis. We saw this with Hurricane Lee. We saw this with Hurricane Adalia. It's going on and on and on. I could go on and on and on about this, and we'd have a huge mountain of, uh, of names uh, that I could go over when it comes to hurricanes. But in the meantime... There's really not that much shear forecasted as the system really moves through Jamaica, then Cuba, and then Haiti, and then kind of does its own thing as time continues to go on, and then it just dissipates in this huge sea of shear right there. So this is all stuff we need to pay attention to as time continues to go on, the European shear forecast. Next thing I'm showing you is the moisture forecast, and the moisture is really the one thing I am a bit skeptical about because there is the chance that dry air could go in and kind of kind of halt this thing's potential intensification and there is a chance of that so here's the um, here's the moisture forecast at this current point a lot of the moisture is expected to remain in the western caribbean sea so right now i'm not particularly that concerned when it comes to tropical uh, development i mean i am concerned for the people who are going to get affected by this but when it comes to is tropical development going to stop right there i'd say probably not because there's more than enough moist moist air and there's uh, just uh, there's not really enough wind shear to really stop this at this current point in time i mean there is current wind shear right now in the atlantic ocean and in the caribbean sea but that is forecasted to weaken in the next 72 hours and allow this to happen that's why the nhc tagged this so early because a lot of their forecasts were screaming hey the wind shear is expected to collapse for a few days this could take advantage this gyre could take advantage right here so uh, we need to pay attention to it and that's what's really uh, keeping my eye going on. If we go ahead and show you the moisture going into like 48 hours or so, we do start to see a bit of dry air start to intrude into the northwestern Caribbean Sea. However, I don't think it's going to get there in time to really stop this initial development. I say initial development because I thoroughly believe this thing is most likely going to get to tropical depression strength. The NHC agrees with me on that forecast. Conditions are definitely conducive for that kind of development, which is pretty interesting considering this is no November out of all months and this is when hurricane season is supposedly supposed to die down I know it's crazy right but st starting about 72 hours out we do start to see an increase of dry air but not enough in my opinion to really stop much tropical development because the kind of the moisture just starts to rebuild and then there's a bit of a battle between the moist and dry air but by the time that starts to happen the tropical system is on it already on its way to cuba and haiti and the dominican republic still deep in that moist pocket of moist air over there so based off of all i'm seeing as of right now i'm not particularly that worried about dry air when it comes to tropical development 
Shear could potentially be a more of a long-term threat, especially as it approaches uh, Cuba and Haiti. But right now, I don't see that being an initial threat, especially when this thing starts to initiate its organization and development. This thing isn't even an invest yet, so I we'll have to wait and see for this thing to get designated for the hurricane models to start coming out. But when those do start to come out, we will start showing you those as time continues to go on. That's all the stuff we have going on with the European model. Next one we're showing you is the GFS. The GFS has been one of those models that have been really rather consistent with its con uh, cons with its tropical systems. I would say at the very least, if we go ahead and show you the Zero Z, it shows tropical systems organizing and developing, moving east of Jamaica, but still bringing some impacts. And then it becomes a rather messy but rather large Category 1 hurricane as it makes landfall near Haiti right there and potentially causes a lot of impacts, uh, particularly in the mountainous areas as well as in the southwestern coast of Haiti over there, one of the poorest parts of the, the country right there. So this is all stuff that we need to pay attention to as it moves through Haiti, starts to weaken due to that land interaction over Hispaniola, over a very mountainous terrain right there, which that's going to anticipate the weakening. And then it kind of becomes this uh, this mid-latitude cyclone as it moves further and further to the north. It starts losing its tropical characteristics. And that's pretty much the last we'll hear of that system according to the GFS model over there. Next one we're showing you is the CMC model. The CMC has been a pretty interesting model to say at the very least. It's been one of those consistent models that have been showing signs of organization and development, and it continues to show that as it pushes just east of Jamaica while bringing lots of impacts to Jamaica, Cuba, Haiti, potentially the Dominican Republic, potentially Central America, potentially the Bahamas as it moves through, and potentially the Turks and Caicos. However, the CMCs also have been pretty interesting as it kind of just, for some reason, relocates its center all the way over here, which that's something I would not trust at all all in my opinion primarily because of how unlikely of a scenario that is but it's definitely something to keep an eye on as maybe a track from central america to here is more of a logical explanation maybe like from here uh, maybe from like here to here or something like that but not this and then that that doesn't happen unless this uh, the system is so massive that it needs to organize even further so just take it with a massive grain of salt and we'll get back. We'll keep you an, an eye on, keep an eye on it. But in the meantime, this has Haiti and the Dominican Republic getting slammed with heavy rainfall and potential mudslides right there. So that's a particular concern that I have with that. Last mile run we're showing you is the Icon run, and the Icon is showing signs of organization and development, and then starts to be get, gets a tropical storm. The Icon is pretty interesting because it actually has it pushing further to the west than a lot of the models are. In fact, it's actually making landfall near western Jamaica right there before moving moving towards Cuba and bringing major impacts to the eastern part of the country over there. So that's definitely something to keep an eye on. And then it brings a lot of impacts to the Bahamas over there. It's a 998 millibar tropical storm before it moves out. It starts becoming a bit more of an extra tropical cyclone as it merges with a new low pressure system that could become a nor'easter in the next few days and really bring some impacts to the Carolinas if it pushes further enough to the west and then towards New England where they could see their first new easter, nor sorry, nor'easter of the season right there. So this is definitely something we need to pay attention to as time continues to go on and we will keep you updated here on the pat's path predictor channel with that being said we're closing the video out right here i hope you enjoyed it be sure to leave a like subscribe to the channel if you are new it helps us out helps us make more videos like these the goal of this channel is to get more people engaged with weather and with that being said have a wonderful day guys stay safe